the Steed Ponte Auto Group in Herkimer and Yorkville, and Turnbull Insurance Service since 1866 present Mohawk Valley Living, exploring the arts, culture, and heritage of our region. Good morning and a Merry Christmas from all of us here at Mohawk Valley Living. Good morning and welcome to Mohawk Valley Living. We wanted to get into the holiday spirit today. So among other things, we thought that we should come to Tiny's here in West Utica. We hear that they have quite a collection of nutcrackers here, perhaps even the largest collection in the world. This time of year, Tiny State Street Grill may be known for their nutcracker collection, but they're always famous for their food. Their fresh cut fries and fish fries draw people from miles away, and it seems like everyone's talking about their grilled Reuben. At Christmas time, Tiny's becomes a destination for young and old, coming to see the incredible nutcracker display. It's hard to believe, but there are over 400 nutcrackers here, from Santa Claus to Scottish ones, and as a matter of fact, right here I have an Ebenezer Scrooge uh, nutcracker. Bah, humbug. Come see the amazing nutcrackers at Tiny's Grill at 1014 State Street next to Players of Utica. The collection is on display through February. We walk a couple blocks up to Genesee Street for our annual holiday visit to historic Fountain Elms, once the home of the Williams girls, Rachel and Mariah. We are given a tour by decorative arts assistant, Ruth Thomas. This year's theme is a children's Christmas in the 19th century. Well, Christmas, the way we celebrate it today is much different than when it was celebrated very early on. Hundreds of years ago, it was a very adult-centered holiday, feasting and drinking and celebrating. The 19th century, it becomes a child-centered Christmas like we have today. Most toys were educational. Um, each one had a purpose. They were gender specific. Boys would have gotten soldiers, automobiles, building blocks, Girls were centered on sewing kits, cooking, dollhouses, and we have a wonderful dollhouse on our second floor in the gallery uh, that's actually decorated for a 19th century Christmas. The Victorian Yuletide at Fountain Elms is free and open today from 1 to 5, and Tuesday through Saturday, 10 to 5 through January 4th. Seeing the toys from the 1800s makes us curious as to what's popular today. So we head up Genesee Street to the New Hartford Shopping Center to the Village Toy Shop. The place is teeming with last minute Christmas shoppers. And we're told building blocks like Legos are on the top of Christmas lists for boys and girls. If you recall, we just saw a popular toy at Fountain Elms from way back in the 1800s. It was building blocks. Well, guess what? One of the most popular items even today is still building blocks. But I was even more amazed to find out that the top seller here was, believe it or not, a box of sand. Oh. But it, this is not ordinary sand. This is kinetic sand. Uh, it does all kinds of special things. Although, at my age, I've not yet quite been able to figure out what those special things are. <laughs> Christmas in the Mohawk Valley again. Special thanks to the team at Steed Ponte Chevrolet in Herkimer for keeping Mohawk Valley living on the road. Part of the owner-operated Steed Ponte Auto Group dealerships serving Utica and the Valley. Once again, Merry Christmas, Christmas in the Mohawk Valley again. The Steet Ponte Auto Group is proud to bring Mohawk Valley Living to you each week, serving the Utica area and the Valley with outstanding customer service. In Yorkville at Steet Ponte Ford Lincoln Mazda, Steet Ponte Volkswagen, and Steet Toyota Scion. And in Herkimer at Steet Ponte Chevrolet. Stop in and see why it's so easy to do business with Steet Ponte.
You go the extra mile for your small business and should expect the same from your insurance company. For over 140 years, Turnbull Insurance Service has been committed to local small business. For your commercial coverage, turn to the company ready to go that extra mile. Turn to Turnbull. Watch Mohawk Valley Living every Sunday on Fox 33 and UTR. And pick up the free Mohawk Valley Living magazine the first of each month. Available at many locations like these throughout the Mohawk Valley and at your closest Stewart shops. Shop NJ Fleehan for the chef on your list. For professional quality espresso machines, KitchenAid appliances and attachments, barware, glassware and bakeware at NJ Fleehan, 703 Bleecker Street in Utica. The people you know, the rock you love, and more songs per hour. 92.7 FM, The Drive, Central New York's locally owned independent rock station. All your holiday shopping needs are at Melrose Supermarket, featuring custom cut meats like hams, standing rib roasts, turkeys, and crown pork roasts, and party trays from deli and salads to breads and fruits, as well as local favorites like Riggies and Greens at Melrose Supermarket, East Main Street in Frankfurt. Visit Maria's Pasta Shop for beautiful Italian gift baskets, perfect for anyone on your list. And call ahead for holiday party trays that make entertaining easy. Maria's Pasta Shop, Oneida Street in Utica. Hi, Dr. Tom. Bringing your cat to the Paris Hill Cat Hospital on Sundays is a part of Mohawk Valley Living. Come inside and see why. Paris Hill Cat Hospital, this is Lindsay. How can I help you? Hello, Mrs. Cole. Your cat is losing weight and you need an appointment? And you're only available on weekends. Sure, I have an available appointment with Dr. Karen Sunday at 2 p.m. Does that fit into your schedule? Okay. We are open seven days a week because we know that your cat can become ill anytime. The Paris Hill Cat Hospital, quality care for your cats and kittens. The social and shopping hub of New Hartford is Sangertown Square, celebrating its 30th year this summer. The mall was built in a crisscross shape with a center court that leads to anchor stores at the end of each wing. Sears and JCPenney are two of the mall's original anchors. Sangertown Square was built in 1980. It was built by the Pyramid Companies who were putting together, starting in the 70s, a string of malls all over upstate New York, Massachusetts, and adjacent spots like that. It's a unique shape. Their theme was Main Street and still is Main Street USA, as you can see from center court from the facade that remains today. We are the only enclosed shopping experience, we like to call it, within a 40 mile radius, radius, which makes it great for central New York because we got a lot of winter here and it's nice to shop with a roof over our heads. I've been coming to Sangertown for the 30 years that it's been open. And uh, there are a couple of things that intrigue me. One of them is this make-believe facade that you see in the center court. There's a dentist right over there, and his name is Enders. The first multiplex in the Mohawk Valley was right here in the mall. It was Hoyt's. And there's J.C. Penney's, which has been here since the mall opened. It is the only two-story store in the mall. And Allison told me an incredible bit of trivia that every year there are 8 million visitors to Sangertown Mall. Eight million. We mentioned that New Hartford had a long tradition of farming, so we visit one of the town's oldest remaining farms, the Humphreys Farm. When we arrive, we see fields being prepared and planted for the upcoming season. We stop and talk to Donald Humphreys, who is more than happy to tell us about his amazing tractor. Oh, this is a John Deere tractor, and this is a Kinsey 12-row planter made in the United States. It is a liquid, uh, liquid fertilizer in the tanks, and the, behind that is where the seed is. And right now we're planting corn seed. I'm planting about 32,000 seeds per acre. I have a computer in the cab that tells me the spacings per inch, uh, the seed population, the acres, the speed, it pretty much tells me everything. So it's a very up-to-date uh, machine. Um, a, a new one now, they tell me, is $80,000. So if you wanted to get one for your garden, uh, $80,000 would take care of it. And then you need another 120 for the tractor to pull it, but you know, They'd be straight rows. Straight rows. <laughs> straight rows and done quick. On a real good day, I can plant 100 acres a day on a real good day, but I don't average that by any means. But uh, she's a good machine. 
We learn more about the history of this fourth generation farm from Hugh Humphreys. It was established by my grandfather, Hugh Humphreys, in 1912. My grandfather had two sons that both worked the farm. Of those two, each had two sons that came back and worked on the farm. And now it's into the fourth generation with uh, my brother's son-in-law and my cousin's son. We, uh, this farm was established basically with potatoes and milk. And in, 19, in 2000, we exited both of those crops and concentrating on uh, row crops such as green beans, corn, soybeans, wheat. And we do have uh, a small acreage of pumpkins that we sell here on the farm in the fall. We operate close to 2,500 acres. We own about a thousand of that. My kids said it was the greatest thing they could have ever happened. Even though they're no longer here, they pursue other things. They feel growing up on a farm was the best thing that can happen to them. Oh, we just love the view that we have uh, from our houses and from the land. It just makes you appreciate Mohawk Valley. Well, I served in the Air Force for five years. And it was in 1970 that, just about 40 years ago, it's right now, that I decided that the Air Force was not a place to raise a family. And that uh, after having seen, uh, I lived in Texas, in California, in Louisiana, and in Maine, after seeing all of them, I decided that this area was the place that I wanted to come back to. Get your sled out on the trails. Call Turnbull Insurance and have a snow adventure tomorrow with complete snowmobile insurance protecting you and your sled. Call 735-9201 and get out on the trails. Watch Mohawk Valley Living every Sunday on Fox 33 and UTR. And pick up the free Mohawk Valley Living magazine the first of each month. Available at many locations like these throughout the Mohawk Valley and at your closest Stewart shops. Make any day a special day and a special day even better with fresh baked pastries and cookies from Cafe Caruso on Bleecker Street in East Utica. Stop in or call ahead for special orders. Visit Brenda's Natural Foods in their brand new, bigger location, right down the street at 236 West Dominic Street in Rome. Brenda's Natural Foods, something good and a lot of it. Hi, welcome to the Little Falls Antique Center in the shops at 25 West. We have two full floors with 50 vendors of interesting and unique products ranging from specialized to very eclectic, primitive to the not so primitive. Remember, shop local, we're worth the trip. Shop Shelter for handmade Adirondack furniture designed by craftsman Jim Kiefer. He works with you to create custom pieces to your specifications, from dining room and coffee tables to bookcases, beds, and bunks. Call or visit Shelter on Main Street in Old Forge. Store co-owners Linda and Joe McHarris invite you to shop the talented local artists at the Artisan's Corner. You'll discover one-of-a-kind handcrafted pottery, clothing, candles, jewelry, and original artwork, handmade from the heart of central New York at the Artisan's Corner in Clinton. Expecting company? Just call Deansboro Superette. They prepare delicious Middle Eastern platters for any number of guests. Call 841-4377. Don't miss the 27th annual Quilts Unlimited exhibition at VIEW, featuring traditional and eclectic quilts and wall hangings from all over the United States. On display through January 5th at VIEW, open daily in Old Forge. We head right from Skinner Auto down 28 South to Fly Creek. You may have passed through this community and route to Cooperstown, but we encourage you to stop and explore this historic hamlet. There are over 200 buildings, structures, and sites contributing to its recognition as a national historic district. Like flies to honey, people have been attracted to Fly Creek for centuries. Right after the American Revolution, lots of young men out of New England who had seen the broader world during the battles, 
came home and realized they had no chance whatsoever of having farms of their own in New England, since almost all the family farms were passed down to oldest sons. The younger sons, then, began heading west out to the frontier, and that was here. Indians, lots of trees, beautiful area, and they came out here to homestead, essentially. Very shortly after that, the entrepreneurs followed them, of course, and a group out of Boston Spa near Albany came out here to survey the need for mills of various sorts. They spotted the two creeks here, Oaks Creek coming down from the north and Fly Creek coming down just the other way and coming to a confluence just below where the present village is. And they said, aha, this is the place. They bought up property and within 10 years time, there were 10 mills going along those two creeks. That's what gave birth to the hamlet of Fly Creek. The interesting thing, one of many, about this little hamlet is that after 200 years of history, it's almost exactly the same size as it was when it was founded, or at least at its heyday, which was around 1840 or 1850. We've always been around 370 people or so. Not many more than that, not too many less. Far, far more than that in the local graveyards, of course, where there are perhaps 4,000. I've suggested more than once that perhaps that the village fathers ought to put up signs at the approach saying, welcome to Fly Creek, more dead than alive, but no one seems to like the idea. In any event, uh, it's remained not only about the same size, it, but it's remained a living village, still with its own little commercial center, as you've seen, still with the stores that people visit, moving among them, one another, weaving together a community spirit here. And that's a splendid thing for a small town to claim. If you would like to learn more about the fascinating community of Fly Creek, be sure to pick up a copy of the humorous book that captures its spirit. Jim Atwell's From Fly Creek, Celebrating Life in Leatherstocking Country is available in bookstores, Amazon.com, and locations throughout Fly Creek. For all the sons of immigrants, the sons of the native land, there are sons yet to be born to carry on the work we've just begun. We stop at historic Grange number 844, home to the Fly Creek Historical Society. We are greeted by society members Pete Martin and Ed Thorne, who are kind enough to give us a tour and show us some of the artifacts they have acquired. I found out today that the Grange organizations throughout the country was started in 1866 to help farmers heal from the wounds caused by the Civil War. The Grange was built in the late 1890s when Fly Creek had many small dairy farms. A local farmer himself, Pete Martin, is now vice president of the Historical Society and tells us the Grange was the hub of the community. He believes it's important to preserve local history. And as he says, you gotta know where you've been before you go where you're headed for. The Grange has always been a social gathering place. As a matter of fact, Pete met his wife Dorothy here and they've been married for 64 years. They met right here at a square dance. If you come to the Historical Society by horse, you can hitch the horse up to this hitching post, which by the way was made right here in Fly Creek uh, by the Novelty Works, which I think was just down the street. Now I've been to Mountain's house and my share of troubles But if I could do it all again Lord, you know just what I do. One of the best activities in Fly Creek is just watching the people come and go from the general store. It's hard to explain, but just spend five minutes here and you'll understand. Back in the 1860s, the Fly Creek General Store was the meeting place for the folks here in town, but there's something different today from what it was back then. Originally, it was way out there by the road with enough room for a horse or two to go through. Then when cars came along, they found that it was necessary to move it so they could have room for cars to park and to get gasoline. And that's why when you come here today, the entire thing, it was lifted and moved back what? A couple hundred feet to where it's located today. It is still the hub of activity here in Fly Creek. Come here for lunch and you can try all of their different sandwiches. I would recommend the General Store Club. It's the special here for the month of May. And I can tell you, it is one of the best clubs I have ever had. 
I'm told that a lot of people, when they come to Fly Creek to visit, they like it so much that they stay. As a matter of fact, Violette right here, she came here from New York City about 10 years ago, loved it so much that she stayed. Uh, rumor has it that in New York she was also a Ziegfeld girl. Hmm. So honey, don't look for me in the morning. Don't cry my name out in your sleep. Don't ring the phone. Am my job in the city? I got somewhere better I've got to be. Well, there's no more useless conversation. No more broken, wasted dreams. No more sleeping alone there beside you. And no more I'm at the gravesite of two brothers, and look at these stones. This one here shows the father's hand holding what was a chain, like a chain link. The son died, and he has on here a broken link because of the son's death. Over here we have the youngest son, uh, George, who died during the Civil War. And the father, you'll notice on his tombstone, had his two sons' chains linked together for eternity. How often can you go to a cemetery and find the word aeronaut describing the person who's buried there? This one does because uh, Leo Stevens was the man who invented the ripcord on a parachute. Before that, people pretty much, when jumping from planes, took their chances, but he developed the ripcord, and he's buried right here in Fly Creek, New York. Fly Creek back in the 19th century had about five churches, if you can imagine. This inside of a community of only about, oh, 300 to 400 people. Sunday morning must have been just a clangor of church bells here as these congregations competed, I suppose, for that small number. Here we're in the Methodist Church. The bell in this building, installed in 1848, does not belong to this church. It belongs to the hamlet of Fly Creek. It was paid for by public subscription and installed here not only to ring for the services on Sunday, but also to ring on work days at the beginning of the work day, at noon, at the end of the workday, and then a kind of curfew that rang on toward sunset so kids knew they'd better run home and run home fast, I guess. The Steet Ponte Auto Group is proud to bring Mohawk Valley Living to you each week, serving the Utica area and the Valley with outstanding customer service. In Yorkville at Steet Ponte Ford Lincoln Mazda, Steet Ponte Volkswagen, and Steet Toyota Scion. And in Herkimer at Steet Ponte Chevrolet. Stop in and see why it's so easy to do business with Steet Ponte. Do something about your chronic pain. InterX Therapy can be the answer to your post-surgical or sports injury rehabilitation or chronic neuropathic pain. Call Dr. Michael Tucherone at 853-6225 for non-invasive InterX Therapy. Sparkle this season with fashions from the Village Crossing. New sweaters, scarves, gloves, boots, and accessories are arriving daily. Sparkle with fashions from the Village Crossing in Clinton. Celebrate the season at North Star Orchards with sweet cider, fresh baked pies, and cider donuts. Add some autumn color with decorative gourds, Indian corn, and corn stalks. Celebrate autumn at North Star Orchards in Westmoreland. That special art, photograph, or memorabilia deserves a special frame. Oscars creates one-of-a-kind gold and silver leaf mirrors and frames. Oscars Picture Framing, 12 Kellogg Road, New Hartford. Have a tropical adventure and walk among hundreds of free-flying butterflies, tropical birds, plants, lizards, and frogs at the Pop Butterfly Conservatory. It's an unforgettable experience for all ages. Open seven days a week on Route 7 in Oneonta. Milan's Market is your holiday meat headquarters, featuring low-salt, low-fat smoked ham and store-made kielbasa. Try their famous crown roast of pork or prime rib, and be sure to pre-order your fresh seafood and shrimp platters. Milan's Market, at the Four Corners in Clark Mills. Tom's Natural Foods is your connection to local farms for natural and organic fruits and vegetables, meats, eggs, cheeses, and other milk products at Tom's Natural Foods in Clinton, naturally. 
Alpaca Gardens has the largest selection of the finest alpaca clothing and products in central New York. Alpaca is warmer than wool, softer than cashmere, and hypoallergenic. Choose from many styles of sweaters and all kinds of warm, comfortable socks. There's also a huge selection of alpaca yarn, roving, and felt, and is the perfect holiday shopping store for hats, mittens, rugs, ponchos, stuffed animals, handbags, and much more. Open seven days a week for the holidays at 27 West Main Street in Little Falls. Jordanville is often referred to synonymously with Holy Trinity Monastery. It was founded here in 1930 by two Russian immigrants who were searching for a place to live a genuine monk's life. The monastery eventually became a main spiritual center of Roman Orthodoxy in the West. We are given a tour by Artem, one of the students at Holy Trinity Orthodox Seminary, who explains the meanings of the many paintings that cover the walls and ceilings. They actually, they're not just paintings, they're actually icons. So they have a very uh, profound meaning to the people who come and uh, it's, uh, it's a very personal relationship because to every uh, image uh, a person can pray and uh, therefore it, it becomes a very spiritual aspect of uh, any Orthodox, uh, Russian Orthodox person. Uh, well, the people that come to visit, I mean, obviously there's the seminarians. We have uh, around 40 uh, coming in, well, the total that will be after everyone comes in. But uh, the people also come here for spiritual um, fulfillment and to kind of recharge um, from, the, from their daily life. So the monastery provides this kind of peaceful atmosphere and prayer where they're able to uh, attend the services, uh, partake in some of the work if they choose to, and just uh, even for a few days or sometimes longer live the, monast the monastic life or feel it. Well, the future of the monastery is to continue the tradition that has already been established. And of course to expand the horizons with the um, seminarians coming in to, um, to let people know that there is this amazing place in the world that uh, people can always come to visit, people study, can study here, become monastics, or simply just uh, enjoy a beautiful day walking around the monastery grounds. You are welcome to visit the Holy Trinity Monastery. To learn more, visit jordanville.org or call 858-0940. The bookstore and gift shop are open Monday through Friday 10 to 4 and Saturday 10 to 2. Young one.